Okay, I am on. First of all, thanks everybody. Uh, Monday morning, I appreciate everyone coming. Hope you're excited for the week. I know we certainly are. Uh, last time I did a presentation at DevNet was in Milan. It was on the last day. It was a Thursday, and I think there was two people. So I'm actually excited to see everybody here. So today we want to talk about how you can profit from the next phase of this mobility revolution. We all know we're in this mobility revolution. Um, I, I look around today, and it's just incredible how many people are on their devices. It is truly becoming this mobilized world. And uh, we want to talk to you all about how, from a development standpoint, you can really start to look at how do you really start to profit using these things we call mobile phones. So we'll go through a little bit of the evolution of the digital business, obviously driving changes in mobility. Um, we'll talk about a product that we have to offer, an enterprise mobility services platform. It's really Cisco's mobility platform. Um, give a little bit of an industry use case just to give you all a flavor about you know, what does it mean to, to be able to develop on this thing and how would that apply to a real world example. Um, and then, of course, talk about some of the development APIs and SDKs, things like that, that we have available from the infrastructure as well as enterprise standpoint. So one of the key things here is, you know, obviously with building mobile apps, you talk about how do I integrate with existing enterprise systems, point of sale, loyalty, et cetera. But then how do you now add in the element of the Cisco infrastructure? Because that really can start to augment your overall mobility experience. And that's, that's an area we want to definitely dive into. Give a quick summary and hopefully we have some time for some questions. Sound good? All right, so why are we here? Um, you're probably wondering, Cisco, what the heck are you doing in mobile applications? Why are we talking about mobile applications? Um, obviously, we're in the IoT booth right behind you. Um, you're hearing a lot about IoT. And the way that we're looking at it is the idea of powering this digital transformation. And the digital transformation is really about how do you start to connect things, people, data, and processes. This is a connected world. And if we think about these, and we look specifically on this aspect of people, how do you connect people? This guy right here, we all have it. We're all connected, we're all staring at it. We're all engaging, we're getting content, we're engaging with other people. It's a constant engagement of people. And so what Cisco wants to say is, how do we leverage this device and actually start to change this experience through connecting people? And you can do that in multiple different ways, right? Build this thing out. Obviously in healthcare, we talk about how do you digitize healthcare. Retail, how do you start to engage in a retail environment? We all go and everyone has a mobile app, but is a mobile app good enough anymore? We're kind of starting to say, no, everybody has a mobile app. How do you change that mobile app and actually enrich it with some context? Obviously, education is one I'm real passionate about. We have a couple different use cases at Cisco working with some schools, which I'm really, really excited about, of how do you actually change um, you know, the education system and uh, get kids using this in an efficient fashion. Of course, museums, smart cities, you'll hear a little bit more about what EMSP is doing at some of the cities. Um, a lot of good stuff going on this week. Hopefully you'll catch it and start to digest a little bit about what we're doing in cities. So why should we care? And, and looking specifically at retail, this is, this is pretty compelling. By 2017, 80% of consumer engagement is going to occur on a mobile device. So if you're a retailer or if you're any sort of, of vertical that's trying to engage with consumers, 80% of that engagement could potentially happen on a mobile device whether it's websites, whether it's native apps, whether it's in your brick and mortar location, that's a tremendous amount of engagement. And so differentiating that engagement is gonna be critical for all of us. Like I said, everybody has a, a native app. You go to the app store, everyone has a native app. Now, that's not good enough anymore. If you just have a native app, you're just one of the others. You gotta to start to think about how am I gonna change that native app experience and how am I gonna personalize it? How am I gonna actually make it so people care more about my native app than somebody else's native app? Because this is real, and it's fast. This isn't 2020, this is 2017. So how's Cisco looking to do this? As I mentioned, we have something called the Enterprise Mobility Services Platform. And it's really a mobile app development and integration platform, integration is key, that lets you quickly deliver what we call context-aware mobile experiences. What you see here is that we don't say we want to help you build context-aware applications. Right? If we came into the ball game and said we want to give you an app development platform that's a broad-based mobile app development platform, meet platform, whatever the market calls it, it, it wouldn't work. Again, everybody has a mobile application. We don't want to go in and say, hey, Mr. Retailer, for you to leverage Cisco's technology, you had to rip and replace. All the millions of dollars you've invested over the last five years building your app, get rid of it. That's not our play here. We're not trying to give you a complete mobile application. What we're trying to do is augment those experiences with context. So you think about what's context. Context is knowing where a user is, location. It's knowing who your user is, and it's knowing information about that user. 
So if you think about personalization, someone walks into your real estate environment, you want to be able to make sure you know that user, you want to engage with that user, you want to engage efficiently with that user. First, you know where they are. Second, you may know who they are. And third, if you have a loyalty program, you know what they've done in the past. So start to tailor that experience for them. And you do that all by inserting that into an existing application. Again, not a rip and replace. So we'll talk a lot about the idea of experiences. An experience is a targeted promotion, a targeted notification, a targeted video, um, a, a personalization at the top, welcome to our environment, personalizing somebody by name. That's an experience that we're talking about. Make sense? Okay, so when we look at the overall journey, uh, we think about how are people actually engaging, and there's a lot of different ways to engage. First and foremost is one that you probably all think is pretty funny, and maybe archaic, captive portal. <laughs> Everybody's used to a captive portal. I join Wi-Fi, I gotta log on. Why is that important for us? Cisco sees that as an initial engagement point. You know, the more and more adoption of Wi-Fi, and the more and more push of users to join and leverage Wi-Fi, it gives us a medium to be able to engage with, with your consumers. They join Wi-Fi, it's a screen. That screen is a medium to deliver content, experiences. And it's also a, a forum to be able to actually learn about your guests. If someone joins your Wi-Fi and logs in with social, well, guess what? You know where that user just, you know, one, who the user is. You know demographics about the user because of the social. And then you know where they are because they just logged onto your Wi-Fi. So all of a sudden, you have the inputs required to start to deliver these experiences. So we see a captive portal is actually a, a pretty powerful tool in this whole journey. The second piece is, of course, native and web apps. So we have development studios. You can build a full native app on our, on our platform if you want. Again, that's not our focus, because our platform is modular based, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, and specifically for, for, from a development community, why that's important. But we certainly can build native applications, as well as web-based application, HTML5 content. So the whole idea of hybrid, I mean, people talk about native, web, and hybrid apps. Kind of Native apps, in my opinion, are kind of out. Every native app is a hybrid app, it's delivering web-based content, but that's a different story. So we look at that as a, a second critical piece. Again, it's a vehicle, it's a medium, it's a screen that we can deliver content into and engage with that user via the mobile device. And the last is an idea of, of Omni, and this is something that Cisco's doing more and more of, and you may see them around the digital kiosk. So if you have an environment where you want to be able to engage, whether it's on a mobile device, whether it's on a, a kiosk, whether it's on digital signage, how do you do that in one central location and deliver this Omni experience, which is basically you know, immersive. If I'm going up and I'm walking close to the, the digital kiosk, you can recognize me, and that content that I see there matches the content I have on my mobile device or vice versa. Creates a very enriched Omni experience. The next piece I want to talk about, and one that we'll actually dive into when we talk about the APIs a little bit more, is it's the idea of location. So LBS, location-based services, hot topic right now. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. And from a mobile app development standpoint, you're going to hear more and more people talk about, oh, it's Wi-Fi, or oh, it's Beacon, or oh, it's GPS. And I'm going to argue with you that it's not one or the other, but it's all of the above. And so there's multiple different use cases for where and how you would deliver location-based services. Um, the obvious that we all have, all of our devices have a GPS. Geofencing by GPS is, is in my opinion, somewhat archaic. That's a, that's a basic principle, because every device tells us that. The second piece is the idea of premise. So there's a very rudimentary way of being able to identify location, and that's if I'm sitting here and I connect to Wi-Fi, whatever access point I'm connected to, I know that that's the access point. And so there's a proximity of you know, maybe 2,500 square feet that I can say, I know that that user's in this particular region because I know what access point he's connected to. Now, it's not finite, but it's still location. And so if I'm a brick and mortar retail environment, I want to be able to say, I have 500 different stores, and I don't want just one generalized marketing campaign. I want to empower my store managers to say, for your particular store, whether it's in San Diego, beautiful weather here, or it's in the Northeast, how do you change the experience? You might want to sell a, 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 a coat in the Northeast where you're going to sell some sunscreen here in San Diego. And just simply being able to say, OK, I walked in. I know the access point that they're connected to is in San Diego. I know where they're at, and I want my content to be based off of where they're at. The third one here get out of the way, is what we consider zone. This is more the proximity base. So many of you probably are aware of CMX, or the Mobility Services Engine at Cisco. This is our Wi-Fi triangulation concept. So leveraging Wi-Fi, you can do triangulation, similar to GPS, and you can start to determine the location in a much more uh, accurate type of fashion. Now that's where if you really want to get finite. I have a department store within specific zones within my department store. I want to start to change the experiences. That's where you can start to get very, very accurate. Of course, we look at Beacon or, or Bluetooth Low Energy 
as that same aspect. So it's an either or story again. It can't be, I'm gonna, sorry, it's a combined. It can't be an either or. You have to look at it and say, Beacon has a, a relevant use case. Wi-Fi triangulation has a relevant use case, but it's still location-based service. So if I say, I wanna deliver this promotion to a user when they're standing in the shoe, shoe section, whether you have a native app and you wanna do that using Beacons, or you wanna use Wi-Fi triangulation using a, a web app, the experience you create has to be common, but the delivery mechanism can vary. So the one thing that I, I would say is when we look at developing APIs, we're trying to do as much abstraction as possible because we want to make sure that this is a complementary type of technology and look at location-based services through all kinds of different paths. Make sense? So let's talk a little bit about the idea of, of, of development. Why are we all here? So what we're looking to do is take a lot of the, uh, the simplistic work um, out of everyone's job here from a development standpoint. If you're building a mobile app experience, you don't want to have to go in and code out, hey, I want to embed a YouTube video. That's, that's not something we should be wasting developer time on. It's a common API, it's common technology. We build a pre-built module, you drag it into your experience, it's a true what you see is what you get experience. I drag the module in, I specify the idea of the YouTube video, now I have a YouTube video embedded in my application. And it's done within a matter of 30 seconds. Those are common things that, that as a product, we need to enable because Again, we shouldn't be wasting developer time doing some of this common technology. So what we have here is our cloud-based architecture where we have these core features. And some of these are common. Again, embed a video, embed text, formatting, carousels, pool, polls, qu quizzes. I mean, we have 100 different pre-built experiences that quickly you can enable, drag and drop, build it. What we also have is this concept of extensibility. And this is really where the developer community comes into play. So on the underlying foundation of this is the extensible runtime platform, as well as the concept of a subscriber subsystem, which tells us a lot about who our users are, what users have joined with us, um, you know, maybe demographic information about that user that you now can start to tap into when you're customizing and building out your custom modules. So let's take one as an example, and we'll dive into a new use case. Let's look at loyalty integration. Let's say you have a use case, which is an actual real use case that we have in, in live right now. Of I want my loyalty members to be able to automatically join Wi-Fi when they come into my environment. So if I give them a captive portal and they log in one time and we can do a recognition of that person, the next time they come in, we can look and say, have we ever seen this user before? And we can say, yeah, we have. And then we can do a simple lookup and say, okay, well, let's call our subscriber subsystem and see if this is a loyalty customer. And if it is, we automatically authenticate them. Right? That's an experience. So there's no, I gotta log in repeated times, I gotta give you all my information. It's one time, you do it one time, every time you go into any one of those environments in the future, your device is automatically authenticated, you got Wi-Fi. That's in a, a concept of a, a, a custom module. And why is that a custom? Well, because everyone's got like different loyalty databases. We can't build something from a product standpoint that can go and talk to every single loyalty system out there. As developers, you gotta understand your, your customer and you have to understand the loyalty system and you have to be able to then build that custom for them. But it's a simple activity, right? Because the underlying foundation of the runtime, of the subscriber subsystem, of a radius authentication server, all of that's built into the core platform. You just need to build a custom module. And those modules can be multiple things. I want to send a notification to my staff when, I, when someone walks in and it's a high value customer enjoying Wi-Fi. That's a custom module. Just send a simple alert to, to a notification system, text messaging system, and all of a sudden your store manager's got a text message that a high value customer just walked in the front door. Make sense? Okay, so let's take an obvious example. We'll talk about hospitality. Build this out. So, what's hospitality looking to do? Everyone's, uh, you know, the, the craze of Wi Fi. Everyone joins and goes to a hotel and joins Wi Fi. It's pretty staggering when you start to look at the, the uh, statistics on, on guests and the reason why they join particular or go to particular hotels, and a lot of it is for Wi-Fi, especially business travelers. So from that standpoint, how do you differentiate experience? How do you improve the guest experience? How do you create stickiness from a loyalty standpoint? Um, how do you create new sources of revenue? And of course, how do you disrupt the market? Because everyone's used to the standard, I logged on to Wi-Fi, I entered my last name and room number, and I got Wi-Fi. Maybe I paid 10.99 for a premium access. That's the standard, but how do you change this? So what we want to talk about is how we want to disrupt this market. of the builds. Whew. That's a long build.
Apologies. Okay, here we go. I don't know why that's not showing up down here. Okay, so let's talk about hospitality. Let's say if I'm a hotel manager, I have my specific property, I want to differentiate my property, and I want to provide my, my high-value loyalty guests uh, a really unique experience. So we all go into hotels and we all log in. We, like I mentioned, we're used to doing it. You log in with your loyalty number, you log in with your last name and room number. And the power of what we can do is in our subscriber subsystem is let's say you have a hotel and you have 500 different hotels and you want one common SSID across all your properties. So now when I go from one property to another, New York to San Francisco, I go to, to San Francisco one time, I log in, I tell you my last name and room number. You're part of our subscriber subsystem. Next time you go to the hotel in New York, and your device recognizes that same SSID because your device does. When you go home, you don't have to connect to your SSID. It automatically recognizes connect. As soon as you connect to that SSID, we can say, have we ever seen this person before? And if the answer is yes, then we can deliver a unique experience. Maybe, again, it's the automatic authenticate you. Maybe it's send a notification to your hotel manager. Maybe it's on the portal you receive. Thank you for being a loyalty, a premium loyalty member with us. Please take, take this free drink coupon differentiate the experience. Now I feel good. This hotel cares about me. So the hotel manager, given that they have the autonomy to be differentiated from the other hotel chain, they can now go and say, well, you know, I, I like my environment, I like my bar, maybe I have a spa, maybe I have something different that I want to highlight. We want to empower them with the ability to provide their own specific experience for their own property, right? Same look and feel, same experience, same, same SSID, but at the bottom instead, I want the power to be able to say, I want to provide a free coupon for a drink as opposed to the other hotel manager wants to give a free massage. So they go in there and using a, a, a native app, they say, okay, this is the experience I want to deliver. When a guest comes in, and again, they join Wi-Fi, we recognize them, we can identify that this is a loyal customer. Based on them being a loyal customer, the logic says, okay, at the bottom of this, uh, this ad, instead of just saying, welcome to our property, it says, welcome to our property, thanks for being a premium member, Get, take this to the bar for a free drink. It's a differentiated experience, right? Simple. And how are we doing that? One, we're using the integration to loyalty systems. Two, we're using the integration to your network because now, we're, again, location-based and then the recognition of the user when they join Wi-Fi. Real-world examples going live today. Make sense? Okay, so how do we enable this from a development standpoint? So like I mentioned in the previous slide, we have the integration aspect of this. Think of this as a full ESP, service bus, API management aspect of things. That allows you to do things like connect to your enterprise apps, CRMs, ERPs, loyalty, all that good stuff. We also have the hooks in the network. So we've mentioned the different technologies that we have hooks into, so CMX, location. We don't have an algorithm to calculate location. We, of course, rely on our, our brother product, the CMX product for that. Other things like uh, Meraki. So we have hooks into Meraki to be able to deliver a, different, a similar type of experience, a lot of us obviously being Wi-Fi based. And then you have your cloud services, which is your standard Salesforce.com, Google Maps, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what we enable on top of that is, as I mentioned, the pre-built things, but then we also have the APIs and the SDKs that allow you to then be able to, to build on top of those core foundational elements. So we have your standard development, Eclipse-based development environment, which many of you are familiar with, that allows you to tap into things, like I mentioned, subscriber subsystem, runtime, et cetera. And then we have the iOS and Android SDK. So when I talked about before the, the ability to insert some of these experiences into a native app, it's via these SDKs. So what the SDK allows you to do is automatically be able to go in and leverage that device to call the location or um, give that particular device a subscriber ID, which is our unique identifier for a device. And then, of course, it allows you to then deliver content. So think of this as, I love to describe it as a billboard. Let's say you have a billboard on the side of the road, and if you think of a billboard and a painted billboard as a, as a native app, Right. Changing that billboard is very hard. Send somebody up there on a ladder, they gotta change all the content, right? Pain, pain in the butt. Now imagine on that billboard, you had a, in the corner of it, a big old TV screen. And now that TV screen, I can change and I can put whatever I want up there anytime. I can change it, I can put an image, I can put text, I can, anything I want, I just snap my fingers and I push it up there. That's what we do with the SDK. So you do develop web content and it basically invokes a small web browser within your native app and then whatever you build and push, it's deployed within that native app. It's real time, it's fast, you don't have to go through and try to deploy it to your entire install base, et cetera. So these are the development tools that we try to enable for our community to be able to go back, if you think about that previous screen I showed, to build those custom modules and be able to tailor them specific to your end customers. Okay, so 
kind of wrap it up here. We have one more slide. Um, so EMSP develops, delivers new experiences. It gives uh, the applications that context awareness again, where, who, about, things like that. It delivers the pre-built integrations to the infrastructure. So no longer do you have to worry about tying into Meraki, tying into CMX and WLCs, et cetera. We provide all the hooks to be able to enable that. And it enables robust user demographic analytics. So one thing I do want to highlight, for those of you that are familiar with CMX product, um, you know, a lot of it is very powerful in the sense of, you probably there's a dashboard here somewhere where you can see, here's the heat map of where my users and dwell times and all this really rich, powerful infrastructure analytics. Well, what if now all of a sudden you can augment that with demographics? So let's say all of us logged in with our social accounts when we joined Wi-Fi here. Now all of a sudden, if you look at that heat map and if you're a store owner, you can look at the heat map and say, oh, I only want to look at that heat map for males within a certain age group, right? And if you're a retailer, that becomes very powerful. So you start to be able to augment all of that infrastructure analytics with this really robust and rich demographic analytics. And then of course, we use real-time data to monetize and influence customer behavior. And that's really what we're talking about here is the idea of context. Okay. So pretty much went through this, easily develop, deploy, manage, distribute mobile apps, um, expose network services, so location, user awareness, et cetera. Um, create the mobile experiences through the tight integration with your enterprise system. So this is, again, the service bus being able to tie into your own enterprise systems. And then cut a lot of your app development time, because like I mentioned, we have 100 plus pre-built modules that allow you to just get rid of the whole idea of I want to build out how to, do, to embed an image into my, my app. Take that out of the picture, let's developers focus on the things that are core to their end customers. I think I'm almost out of time. I wanted to leave a few five minutes or so for questions. Any questions? Please. Uh-oh. Oh, I gotta stay away from it. So the first use case that you mentioned was a captive portal. Yeah. So if I want to build a captive portal for both EMX and Meraki, I will use EMCP. Right. Yeah, a great question. It's actually a really good question. So CMX and Meraki has the base captive portal experience, right? It's, uh, it can do some, some things like the social login. Um, what we enable is we, that's more of the connect piece. If, you just, if your customers come to you and say, I want a way to do secure connection, and it's, it's, it's pretty basic, um, that's a CMX or a Meraki play. What we fall in in that whole nomenclature of detect, connect, and engage is in the engage pillar. Because now you can do things like provide a more additional capabilities. So think of this as on, the, on your captive portal, you want a click to call button. We have an out of box module, click to call. Right? That's a, there's a lot more out of uh, functionality. And then um, think of, okay, I, I connect. And then what do you do post authentication? We can have it so you can build a complete mobile web app post authentication. So the idea is um, if you think of kind of good, better, best. So the CMX, if you're looking for just to secure connect, connect capabilities, CMX Connect to Meraki. If you're looking for more of the engagement, kind of talking to the marketing business type user, that's where EMSP plays. So we're, we're all within the whole connected mobile experience umbrella of DTEC Connect and Engage, um, but we look at ourselves more of the engaged pillar. Any other questions? If not, again, enjoy the week. Really appreciate all your attention today, and uh, hopefully you'll have some time to get outside and enjoy this weather. Thanks. <laughs>